Why don't you speak Aramaic to prove that you're Jesus? <laughs> this has to be one of the most ridiculous and illogical, stupid questions that I've ever heard, to be frank. Um, it, it goes along with many other stupid questions that I'm often asked, I feel. Now, I say stupid because, and illogical because it, it, it is totally st crazy to believe that just because I spoke Aramaic that somebody would believe that I'm Jesus. But the reality is that Jim, is it Cav, 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 Cavizel, Cavizel, I think, I I think is the way you pronounce his last name, who played me in The Passion of the Christ, spoke Aramaic for nearly two hours. <laughs> a lot longer than that, I'm assuming, yeah, if he had exactly. rehearsals. And... and if that's the case, then that proves that he's Jesus, does it? No, it only proves that he can speak Aramaic. That's all it proves. It proves nothing else. And this is a measure of people's illogical reasoning. If I spoke Aramaic, the only thing it would prove is that I can speak Aramaic. It doesn't prove that I'm Jesus. If it did, then there'd be literally thousands of people who could prove that they're Jesus. Right? And that obviously can't be true because there's only one of us. So, so I find a lot of these questions quite, quite laughable, actually in terms of the lack of logic that's present. And in fact, I would suggest to people who ask these kind of questions that you need to go and do a course in logic, right? Because, because without a course in logic, you obviously don't understand much at all. And a course in logic is if I can speak Aramaic, then all it proves is that I, that I speak Aramaic. That's all it proves. It doesn't prove anything else. It doesn't prove my identity as Jesus. It never can in fact, prove my identity as Jesus. And if you believed that I was Jesus just because I could speak Aramaic, then in my opinion, you're, as, you're crazier than I am. <laughs> like, honestly, if you believe that that's true, then you're crazy. Of course it's not true. Yeah. Go on, what are you going to uh, ask? <laughs> um, also, uh, not many people actually speak Aramaic, do they? Of course. So, so like I find that humorous as well. Like the dialect of Aramaic that we spoke in the first century it has not been spoken for nearly 2,000 years. So how would anyone ever know that I'm actually speaking the Aramaic that I spoke in the first century, even if I could speak it? No one, what, who's going to be around to validate the test? Certainly not the person who can't speak Aramaic at all. How can that? But I could be speaking gibberish for all they know. <laughs> and just because I go blah, 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 and, and speak some Aramaic to them, what, they're going to believe that now I'm Jesus because I'm speaking? And by the way, a spirit could overcloak me and speak the dialect of Aramaic that I spoke 2,000 years ago. But what does that prove? Nothing at all except that I'm able to be overcloaked by a spirit mm -hmm. who speaks Aramaic. Nothing else. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this um, in terms of um, we've established that it's not logical that just because a person speaks Aramaic that's proof that they're Jesus. Not at all. What about the fact that you are saying that you have memories mm -hmm. of the last 2,000 years mm -hmm. and someone might assume that part of those memories would be language. Mm -hmm. So can you explain what, what's going on there? Sure. For the last 2,000 years, um, after I left the earth, I never spoke a language. I, we spoke in thought packages that can be transmitted into any language uh, from one person to another and through feelings. So, so for 2,000 years, I haven't spoken a language as people on earth interpret a language to be. A language is a very uh, impure and inaccurate way of, conform of transferring information, M mostly because I have to have a feeling, then it turns it into a thought that I have to accurately describe. Then these thoughts need to be turned into a language that then, and the language has to be able to accurately describe the thought as well as the feeling. I transmit that to you through my voice. You then hear it as a language. You've then got to transmit it back to a thought and then down into a feeling for you to understand how I feel about a certain subject. Now, there is a whole heap of levels of distance from my original emotion in that process. We've got the transmission of a thought, transmission of a language, the retransmission of a language into thought, the thought into an emotion. 
And so there's a whole heap of errors that, are, that arise and do always arise, in fact. You see it constantly in day-to-day -day life on Earth, all these errors that arise due to this inaccurate way of transmitting feelings from one person to another. Now, in the spirit world, we transmitted feelings as they were. And if a person could feel them, they were open to those feelings, they not understand completely accurately what was being felt and therefore what was being thought. On earth, that rarely occurs. It's very rare for another person on earth to actually accurately understand what you feel, no matter what language you use mm -hmm. and no matter how much you tell them something. And, uh, and so I feel the process of language on earth is very limited. Now, if you examine that and I understand that I haven't used language for that period of time, and in fact, I don't actually enjoy the use of language for, those, for these reasons because I find it's often misinterpreted, and then you can see that I probably haven't had interest, much interesting language for nearly 2,000 years, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, while I could speak some languages in the first century, they were languages that I learnt from as a child. I spoke three languages in the first century, not Aramaic only, but also Hebrew and Greek. And these are languages that I learned through my study, both usually of the, Bi of the Bible or what was known to be the Bible at that time. So the Jewish books of the Bible. The Jewish books yeah. of the Bible. And also, some, and also because I lived in, up until the age of 12 in, in near Alexandrina in, the, in, in Egypt, at uh, well, Alexandria in Egypt, I uh, spent a lot of time uh, in the synagogue and, and conversing with people who spoke Greek as well as Hebrew and Aramaic. So, so I learned all three languages as I was growing up, just like the average person on earth would do if they lived in a household with three languages. Mm. Now, those languages are not important to me. They're never going to be important to me. And, and in the end, while I might be able to speak them once I remember everything from my soul, which remember I said is a process of releasing fear. So as I release fears, I will get closer and closer and closer to everything that I remember. Everything that I remember will have clarity, including language. But I suggest to people that I won't be able to just speak Aramaic. I should be able to speak almost every language of the earth, given the fact that I've interacted with almost every language of the earth over 2,000 years through the transmission of thought. So, so I feel that the whole concept of me speaking Aramaic, when the whole concept should be, you should be able to speak any language on earth, <laughs> is interesting in itself. Second, secondly, the only reason why I can't speak any language on earth is because of fear. It's because of fears that I have within myself that prevent me from this assimilation of the knowledge that comes from my soul that doesn't prevent it in other areas because I have no fear in those particular areas. All I need to do is work through those particular emotions and as I do, things will have a lot more clarity. And therefore, I might be able to speak these languages. But even if I can speak every language on earth, it's still not proof that I'm Jesus. Mm. All it's proof of is that I can speak every language on earth. That's the only thing it proves. So could I ask a little bit of clarity there? You sure. spoke about how it might be possible in the future as you remove more fear for mm -hmm. you to remember not just Aramaic but many other languages. Hebrew, Greek initially and then mm -hmm. the other, other languages. So just for people who've never met you before, um, this certainty that you're Jesus, did that, and all of these memories of 2,000 years of life, did that happen very suddenly? No. No, okay. it's happened over a period of time. So, so as I've released fear, I remembered more things. As I release another fear, remember more things. As I release another fear, remember more things, and so forth and so forth. And this has been going on now for 17 years of my, well, it's actually all of my life in this life, but for the last 17 years in a more active way and for the last nine years in a more direct way because I then had to come to accept a few things that I wouldn't psychologically accept before then. So it's going to be a process like that from now on as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue going through this process as long as I allow the release of fear, I will also allow the return of the memories. When I say the return, they're still there. All the memories are there. It's just my ability to psychologically accept them will be determined by the fear that I'm in. So would you say it's similar to someone who has, a similar but not the same perhaps, as someone who has some fear about 
an accident that happened when they were a child and because of that they block the memory Certainly. of that. Yeah. It's exactly the same as that. Yeah. Or you could say it's almost the same as Alzheimer's in some ways. Uh -huh. And Alzheimer's occurs because people do not want to remember certain things and as a result they start closing down their ability to remember. The memories are still stored within their soul and in their, and in, in their case in their spirit body's mind but they're not accessible because of this desire to close them down because of the emotional impact that these memories may have in terms of their life. And for this reason a lot of people close down their memories from childhood in particular but also as people get older, oftentimes from all of their life, they close down their memories. Mm. They can't remember things. You know, I was speaking to my mother the other day and she can't remember smacking me across the face when I was 15. Why is that? Because she doesn't want to remember it. Mm. She doesn't want to remember because it has some emotional hurt for her, some emotional pain. Like, I remember it. My sister remembers it. <laughs> my brother remembers it, but yeah. she doesn't remember it. And, and so this is an indication of what happens to memory. When we have fear associated with memory, we do not remember things and it's a fact of life. Okay, so what has been the content of your memories so far? I mean, are they events? You, we're talking about language here. Um, <clears throat> why have you remembered some things and not language, I suppose I'm asking? Well, um, firstly, I've never viewed language as very important. Uh -huh. So I've never had a much of a focus on remembering language. In fact, I feel language has many flaws, as I've explained. And so um, I'd prefer to be able to transmit emotions than transmit language. Mm -hmm. um, there, are, there are many other things that I remember because I, I have a deep desire to remember them. So things about God, for example, God's laws. I've always had a fascination, deep desire, no fear about those kind of things. So these are the things I remembered first. Mm -hmm. I remembered the process of coming back to earth and the process of, you know, what, how we came back to earth. But only after I dealt with a lot of fear. And I, I was in fear for months on end before I dealt, before I allowed any of these kind of emotions. So there are some times when I dealt with lots of fear and I remember something. And then there's other times when I have no fear and so I remember those things very easily. Now, the majority of things that I'm teaching people at the moment are things that I have no fear about. And so therefore I can easily remember them and easily um, transmit them to others using the best possible language I can given the fact that I'm very limited with English <laughs> as well as any other language. And, um, and all I can do is explain myself in different ways until people understand. And, uh, and because I have no fear on these particular subjects, um, it is very, very easy for me to explain these particular things and remember them. Of course, the things that are more personal in my life, so the things that have happened to me personally in the first century, all through the spirit world and on earth, are much more personal in terms of my fears. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, they are harder to remember. Many of the personal things are much harder to remember as a result of the fears that I have. So as I've released fears, then I remember more things. So, so for example, there was a time when I didn't remember much of my life in the first century, and now I remember a lot of it because I have released fears about different things that allowed me to remember specific events. Mm. Mm. Okay. There's just a point about your physical body and your spirit body being different. Yeah, well, that's true too. The spirit body and the physical body is different uh, to my soul. So for the average person who are on earth in their first incarnation, they have a soul or half of a soul connected to their physical body and spirit body. So everything, every experience that their physical body has had, their soul has had. Every experience that their spiritual body has had, their soul has had. In my case, because we're connecting, and in every one of the cases of any of the 14 who have returned, in our case... The soul has been around for 2,000 years, but the bodies we're connecting to have only been around, in my case, for 51 years, right, since the time of conception. Now, since I've only been around since the time of conception, my physical body and my spirit body only remember events in this life. And it's only my soul that remembers all the events of all of my life. So it depends upon how much I allow this connection with my soul as to how much I will remember. And how much I allow the connection is determined by fear, as I said. So while I'm afraid about certain things, so for example, if I'm afraid of what will happen to my physical body, then I'll only remember certain things. 
if I, if I release that fear, then I'll remember a lot more things and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it depends totally on what I remember as to what... Uh, what I remember depends totally on the level of fear that I allow myself to work through at any given time mm. and the level of fear that I allow myself to experience at any given time. Once I allow myself to work through those particular fears, then I have a very complete memory of everything that has occurred. So there are some events that I've done a lot of work processing through my fears and so I remember them vividly as a result and they have no emotional signature anymore. And they don't, I don't feel pained by them and I don't feel afraid of them anymore. And so I can remember them very, very well. Mm. There are other events that that doesn't apply to. Yeah. And is there a reason why you've <coughs> chosen English for this incarnation? Well, I suppose there are a lot of reasons for choosing it. Is, it, is one of the, well, it is the most widely spoken language on the planet to a, to a degree in terms of the amount of countries that speak it um, and the media would you say and I suppose yeah the there's the media issue most of it in is very much based on English and, and there are also like it is because it is widely spoken in the western world there is a lot of effort and time put into translation into English from other languages so it would make sense for anybody who returns to earth to to probably speak English as their first language or their second language at least, uh, which of course all of the 14 can do. So while others of the 14 know Spanish and French and Vietnamese and, you know, Afrikaans and other languages, um, the reality is that all of us also know English. Yeah. As I said before, it's completely unimportant what language I speak on earth. What's more important is whether I'm logical, whether I make any sense or not, whether when people listen to me they realise that there are things that are said that are truth or not. That's the most important thing I would have thought. If I was listening to another person, I wouldn't be concerned about what language they're speaking. I'd be concerned about whether what they're saying makes any sense and whether what they're saying I can put into practice and actually prove whether it's true or not. That's what I'd be concerned about if it was me looking at this question as to whether I can speak Aramaic or not, well, to me, it makes no difference. What, what matters, can I speak logic or not? <laughs> and I feel for the majority of people, um, they have a lot of difficulty with logic because of their emotional belief systems. And I feel that's one of the reasons why logic is often thrown out of the window and people then accept belief systems which are illogical. Mm. Certainly from my perspective, I find it uh, crazy that when people are sitting in front of you interviewing you, they want you to speak Aramaic or turn water into wine when I would think wouldn't like world peace or a connection with God be yeah, far more to, relevant to, to a discussion like with Jesus? A million more questions <laughs> yeah. that, that could be asked that are higher priority than those. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay.